there is a whole lot of shaking going on. In Hebrews 12, 26 through 29, the word says, Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. <clears throat> now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken, as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace, in which we may serve God acceptably, with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. You've only to open your eyes to see the shaking that is going on in the world. The very fabric of our society is being threatened by immorality, lawlessness, and the instability of everything we used to count on. As we draw ever closer to the final trump and the great tribulation, the world systems are being shaken apart. This is necessary to set the stage, to set the stage for the rule of Antichrist. There is a conditioning taking place in those of this world. We, who are of the kingdom of God, not of this world, can be assured that we will not be shaken because we are dedicated to God in Christ. We are in this world for a while, but not of it. The Lord has promised to keep us safe in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of danger. In 2 Timothy 1, 7 through 12, the word says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's the mind of Christ that we've been given, a mind that cannot be shaken. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Now, these sufferings are not the things that Christ bore for us on the cross, such as sickness and disease, poverty, lack, oppression. All these things are things from which we've been delivered. But the sufferings are dealing with the flesh, maintaining our peace and our joy in the midst of all that's going on, in the midst of all the shaking. These are the sufferings he's talking about, the suffering of the flesh in order to walk by the Spirit. We have to dominate the flesh and our emotions. Verse 9 continues, Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. You need to really, really make this your reality because things are not going to get better. They're going to get worse in the natural realm. As we get closer and closer, you should rejoice. You need to see it through the eye of the word, not your emotions. You need to understand what the Lord is doing. And when he talks about the sufferings, he's talking about spiritual warfare, He's talking about dealing with all of the attacks of the devil and overcoming. It's easy to fear, but you must not. The word says that perfect love casts out fear. It casts it out. John, 1 John, I'm sorry, 4, 17 through 19. Love has been, <coughs> excuse me, love has been perfected among us in this, 
that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. We're talking about God's love, perfected love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If we really love God, we will believe him. We will take him at his word, and we will be confident in his taking us through these times until the last trump sounds. The love of God has been given to us, so if you trust God's love and choose to believe his promises, you can hold on to your peace and your confidence no matter what. Every generation has had its horrors, but we now know the timing of the age and that we are the last generation. Always keep in mind that it is only the Father who knows the actual day and the actual hour. Not even Jesus knows. So don't be deceived by people who claim to have figured it out. However, Jesus did say that we were to recognize the season in which we most certainly are now. We don't know how long a season is. It's not specified. But we know we are in it. To take your place in this unshakable kingdom, you must know the whole truth and nothing but the truth. To understand what you are standing on, having confidence in, this is essential. Ignorance and false doctrine will destroy you. The Lord says this. He spoke this through Hosea in Hosea 4, 6, where he says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Ultimate destruction is the lake of fire. Because you have rejected knowledge. Now he's saying it's not because they haven't heard it. He's saying they're destroyed for lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge, the true knowledge of God, the truth. Because you have rejected knowledge, he says, I also will reject you from being a priest for me because you have forgotten the law of your God, meaning the principles of your God. I also will forget your children. Now this is a prophecy he spoke through Hosea, but it extends all the way to the end. We must understand this and not listen to people who want us to just fit in, to get along, to be part of the, the big mass of totally corrupted Christians who sadly are going to be here for the tribulation most of whom will take the mark of the beast because they won't pay any more attention to the word then than they do now. So they'll take the mark, they'll rationalize it, and that's eternal condemnation. That's what it means here where it says destruction. Faith is a product of living by and in the word. It is not a result of reason. If you try to use natural reason... You will talk yourself out of faith every time. The word has to be your reality and everything else a temporary circumstance. There is only one place that cannot be shaken and that is on the narrow way that Jesus identifies which is right down the middle of the word. In Matthew 7, 13 and 14, He says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. We have already identified destruction as ultimate lake of fire. It leads to destruction. That means anything goes. Whatever spin anyone wants to put on the word is fine with them. But that leads to destruction. That's the broad way. And he says, there are many who go in by it. 
the majority. Because narrow is the gate and difficult the way which leads to life, and there are few that find it. Very few that find it. And then the next verse, he starts by saying, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. These are the ones who are spreading false doctrine, which is a curse. And he says to beware of them. Stay away from them. If you fully grasp this as your reality, you will be able to go through these treacherous times in peace, in joy, and in confidence, which is totally supernatural. But you are in the supernatural if you are truly in Christ. However, not without consistently fighting the good fight of faith, that's what the sufferings are that we've read in a couple of these scriptures, fighting the fight of faith, it gets tiring. I know, I fight it every day. But it's the only thing that will succeed. But God has given each of us the gift of faith so that we can stand in his kingdom and not be shaken. Don't allow yourself to even get to the outer edges of Jesus' narrow path, but walk in the center of it always, and you will be secure. Remember, if you have any questions, you can email me at answers at bdhyman.com and always realize that the better you know the word, the better you know God.